for both of these are presentations. I don't say that. You're supposed to be, you know, watching the presentation. It's Sunday. Oh, you know. You're welcome to see what I start doing. Uh, hello, my name is Dylan Rees and I'm uh, from the Department of Computer Science here at Swansea University. And I'm going to present our uh, project, which is a GPU assisted scatter plot for millions of core events. I'm going to start with the motivation behind the project, and that's to uh, visualise uh, some call centre data um, from our industrial partner. Call centres are an important part of uh, the economy these days. There are 770,000. 770,000 contact centre positions in the UK alone, which is equivalent to 4% of the working population. It's fairly similar numbers across the world. In the US, it's only like 4% of the working population work in contact centres, which is equal to 2.5 million people there. And in some countries, it can be a lot higher percentage. So it's a really important uh, part of the economy. And we've all dealt with uh, call centres every time you want to have a problem with something, if they phone somebody up and you deal with uh, contact centres. So we really see it's an important industry. Um, within call centres, customer experience is recognised as a key differentiator. It's an important thing. Nobody really likes to talk to contact centres and they realise this and they realise that if we can really show that, that we're better than our competitors, you know, there's an advantage there. And there's also a cost saving with uh, having an improved customer experience that the customer doesn't constantly try and call back again and again and again. So our aim is to uh, provide insights into call centre data uh, with the use of uh, with the use of visualisation. <coughs> so a little bit about the data we have. Um, our work is in conjunction with QPC Limited, who uh, provide infrastructure within call centres, and they can collect a lot of data. And we have the data from one of their customers collected over one month, which is equal to 4.9 million calls. So a fairly large number. And this is collected over 43 different contact centre sites all across the world from uh, South Africa, Egypt and here in the UK. <coughs> so uh, it's quite a large data set and each of these calls has over 70 attributes. Um, these attributes vary from uh, the time of the call, how long the call was, how long you were on hold for, how many agents you spoke to, how skilled the agent was and all sorts of, all sorts of things like this. However, it doesn't include anything about what was said in the call. There's no sentiment analysis that can be done in the call. I think it's purely the uh, metadata about the calls. An important factor in these um, calls is the NPS, which is the Net Promoter Score, which is actually a feedback score that the customer, whoever calls, provides at the end of the call. I'm sure you've had these surveys at the end of the call suggesting, asking, rate your experience. Um, and this is what we uh, want to improve effectively. Uh, this net promoter score basically tells the uh, the company that if a com uh, if a customer would promote their services or detract from the services, say no, don't use this company. So I think so. Our aim is to improve that. So um, to do it, we created um, some scatter plots and we used some C plus uh, plus program language and the Qt framework. Um, we used some OpenGL for visualization of the data. And use some open CL for filtering the data um, through a large data set. So we have a video demonstration, hopefully, here, of our application. So this is a uh, the overview of our uh, application with a month's worth of data loaded. On the this side of the screen here, we can see the interaction panel, and it tells the data uh, the user how many uh, calls are loaded. The number of calls rendered, we remove some erroneous data, and uh, the number of customers this represents. Um, and in the main part of the screen, you can see a scatter plot of uh, the data plotted. So here we have a data time along the bottom, along with a customer effort score along the side. Uh, customer effort score is a measure of uh, how much effort they think that people have put into a call. So the longer you're on the call, the more effort you're in, and the more times, the more, the more agents you speak to, the more effort, etc. And um, uh, here we can see then oh, the, um, the points are coloured by the call origin, so whether it's come from the, an agent initiated call, a customer initiated call, or a customer um, who doesn't speak to an agent. We have different variables that we can change these then, so we've got call duration here for example, we have work duration and many other durations, we're able to change these on both axes. 
um, as well as some additional ones for the time along the uh, x-axis. The user is able to use these uh, bars along the side and along the bottom to uh, zoom in on the data, so um, zoom in on the axis and then move them up and down to move along the axis, as we can see demonstrated here. Uh, so we can use them to pan and zoom. As well as that, uh, we can also zoom in using a, a mouse wheel action. So scrolling the mouse wheel, we're able to zoom in on the, the specific uh, uh, area of the scatter plots. Um, we're also able to click and uh, drag the scene and pan the scene by, uh, by clicking and dragging so we can easily uh, explore the data. Uh, notable when we zoomed in now to a single day is that we can start to see some patterns emerging in the data here. Um, so here we have weight duration against the data time. And um, this was probably due to a uh, change of shifts uh, across different sites and things like that. Um, we also have a, a logarithmic scale. As you see, all the data was loaded towards the bottom. So we've uh, applied logarithmic scale to the y-axis to enable to, the data to be seen a bit clearer. And in doing this, we can see some uh, spaces, gaps in the data here, which uh, need some exploration. And here, when we've uh, moved the y-axis to cost, we can see uh, the layered nature of the calls, that the, uh, the calls that don't speak to an agent are the cheapest, and the agent-initiated calls in green are the uh, most expensive calls. Um, I want to demonstrate the filtering of the uh, <coughs> data set. So here we have uh, the date and time along the bottom and the time of day along the uh, y-axis, and the size of the, <coughs> the, glyph, uh, the points are to weight duration, or call duration, sorry. Um, this is our filtering interface here then on, we have uh, on this side and we, oh, I should point out as well that the um, colours um, mapped to the promoter score, so uh, positive are in uh, orange and negative in uh, blue and the ones in green are the, the ones without any score. So here we are able to quickly filter away the ones without any um, promoter score. Um, it's uh, quite quiet. Uh, we were able to process the 4.9 million calls really quickly. Um, we notice here then that most of the, uh, the longer calls tend to be before 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the, the larger spots. Uh, along the side here then we have these histograms which represents the um, distribution for our different, va um, different variables. So here we've got weight duration, you can see that the uh, a lot more calls with a lower weight duration. And we can see these pro uh, uh, preview of these um, histograms on each button as we go along. Uh, users are able to use these sliders to change um, variables or pick them manually. We can see when the filter is applied, the button indicates uh, red to show that that filter is applied. We're able to add uh, multiple filters in a uh, logical and operation so that um, we can find more than one filter. And we can see it's instantly updates. We have a second uh, red uh, button. Uh, we're also able to brush for individual details for calls and brushing around certain set calls brings up uh, all the details for those calls and um, the, the metrics that we have. Uh, we also show call, uh, able to show call metrics for the. the the whole data set itself. So here we have uh, the call arrival rate over uh, eight days here. We can easily pick out uh, the weekdays versus the weekends here. So we can see that the Sundays on this side and the Sunday on the far side a lot lower than the, the weekdays and Saturdays somewhere in between. We also have an average line that is added here, which you can't quite see. It's a dotted line just below the, um, the main peak to see how the uh, uh, that day compares to the average day throughout the, uh, the data set. Um, we see some days are higher than, than average and some are lower. And some we have some random spikes every so often, which we're not too sure uh, the reason for. We also have um, uh, call wait time, uh, so <coughs> the average call wait time at any particular time. Um, so we can you see that it tends to be a spike towards the end of each day. And also we have a call arrival rate. Uh, oh, sorry, call abandonment rate. Call arrival. Um, 
so that's the application. I'm going to move on to some uh, domain expert feedback um, that we received from um, our industry partner, and they seem to um, uh, like the software. It's the first time they'd seen a uh, month's worth of data in, at one single time. However, they did say that they would like to have uh, more variables on the data set. And finally, I'd like to move on to some future work for the project. Um, we hope to use some slight technical changes in using uh, the shared context between the OpenCL and OpenGL to try and improve the responsiveness of the program, or possibly use uh, a Vulkan API. We'd also like to, uh, the ability to show more call attributes, um, as uh, uh, QPC suggested. We've also been working on some agent-based visualization, which we can see in the picture down here. And we also would like to um, work on some overplotting detection. And I'd like to thank you for your attention and ask if there are any questions. We can start. Any questions? I, I, can, yeah. I can ask a question. Yeah. Um, if in your video you um, you brush a significant area or a uh, specific area, mm -hmm. and then uh, it shows all the data, mm -hmm. uh, why are we, would we want to look at the raw data rather than something else? So that you can um, see the details for that particular subset that you think, oh, this looks weird, so then you could almost highlight it and it comes up with all the details, it tells you who those callers are, when they were called, everything, all the details about them, so that you could possibly do some further analysis on it. You might see, like, pull up, oh, these all go to the same agent or something like that, mm -hmm. so it's this ability to... But why can't you just visualise that? It was a requested feature of QPC, isn't it? It's worth saying. Yeah, actually, yeah, it was actually requested. Yeah, that's, that's why I <coughs> questioned it. But then, you know, you might not see it in a different visualization. It might just be that it stands out in that particular graph, and then you, you change it, and okay, it's gone mm -hmm. now. You know, you don't see it in like some different ones. It's just they're easily able to investigate anything that might pop up at that you know pop out at that particular time. It also means that they can um, that the industry partner are able to take those calls that that data set and get the ID value of the call, and then they can use their analysis. They can do their analysis on it. Yeah. So. Yep, and the other answer is that the, a scatter plot is a low dimensional visualization yeah. space, but the data is high dimensional. So you need a way of being able to reconcile that. Yeah. So you bring up a high dimensional table. <clears throat> so in the video, you mentioned that we can see that like during the weekdays, our like, calls are number of calls are increasing, but mm -hmm. the opposite weekends are less, but how did you extract the information because I couldn't see anything on the axis, I just see the dates. Uh, there was a uh, third axis on the, uh, for when the metrics come in basically, Okay. Um, on the far side of the screen. Okay. From the, uh, yeah, with the actual numbers of it, yeah. It is not actually specifically outlined, so yeah. it is something that needs to be improved a bit to be honest. Why do you choose blue for negative calls and orange for positive calls? Oh, I just tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> Look nice. Yeah. Is there any reason? Yeah, yeah, just the, the order of the colour map almost really. Mm -hmm. I think it's not a particular choice. I wanted to avoid the red green. Yeah, red green as well. Just green throughout all Excuse of my. Excuse me? How do you say that? What? Well, I use red green throughout all my stuff as well. Idea, yeah. I took offence though. <laughs> it's a difference. The well, can easily change as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And this is an easy option. Are you using my uh, my wonderful library? No. Ah. <laughs> I, I used it. it. <laughs> yeah, used it. Yeah. That's because it's got my name on it. <laughs> How about this question? Why scatter plots? Why did you choose? Why are you using scatter plots? It was the initial go-to almost, like, oh, we've got a lot of data, you just want to see, oh, how is this distributed? So I think the initial idea is, oh, let's get some scatter plots to go and have a look. Um, trying to use the data using something like Excel just didn't work because there was too much data. So it was okay. We have to build our own program to see the data. So let's have a look and 
the scanning of the first part, let's draw some scatter plots. So that's why. Good answer. Uh, you said there were, you know, there's a lot of computation uh, done to get all these um, mm -hmm. points shown on the scatter plot. Um, have you tried it with a scatter plot matrix? No, we haven't as yet. Okay. It's uh, something that could be done in the future. Okay. <laughs> You why the stacked histograms? I saw very quickly in your demo video some histograms that were stacked on top of each other. So there's two sets of histograms: one which is the overall view of the data, and then the view of the data had the filters that they were being modified, being applied, basically. So that's the two different histograms. Um, but you have you have the filtering histograms. And you have a window where you're filtering mm -hmm, yeah. there. So why do you have the two stacked on top of each other? Well, it's just the one. The top one shows the whole data set, and the the bottom one shows how the data sets would be after the filters that you're currently modifying would be when applied, basically. I guess the question is, but why would you do that? Why would you have two like that? Because of the. The distribution of the data is all slanted to the, the bottom. Like if you just moved away slightly from the bottom, um, you can see you just won't have anything; it would just be flat. So the idea is that you can see the distribution without the effect. What would, it, would it be like having applied the filter, really? If that makes sense. <laughs> I I know what you're trying to say, but I was trying to get at the. Well, I was trying to get at two things. One is, I don't think you really mentioned why during yeah. your presentation. And the second thing is, it's because of the, the, the distribution of the data is strange. Yeah. It has these extreme outliers caused by machine-generated calls and stuff like that. And thus, we, this is a kind of way to, f f like a focus and context style resolution of the filtering. Yeah. So the, the top one shows the context, and then the, the bottom one is like the focus. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it would be good to mention that okay. in the presentation, because in the presentation you said this is this, this is this, 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 yeah. but the why, it's yeah. we're a little bit. OK, and then did you have a question, I? Why the average lines? You said you have them, and they are nice, but why? Why are they there? Like, so that the day. So if you, if it's a day that uh, that differs massively from the average, it stands out almost. You can compare benchmark across days. It's not only that, but you can benchmark then across data sets. So if you have a different data set from a different customer, you can see well, this is the average for this customer, and compare it then and benchmark. The that's right. That's right. You could you could mention that in your yeah. a little bit more wise in your. Yeah. I've gone a bit rusty on. Uh, <laughs> Good. I saw the y-axis is tilted. Is it? Yeah, if you see... In the video? Yeah, in the video. Um, um, do you mean that the plots actual, the calls, they're slanted it, to the right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. that's the, that's by design, isn't it? Okay. It's because you're, um, the start time, isn't it? Maybe it's the start and end time. Mm. Okay, it's it's gone. Oh, that's not on this way. <laughs> um. Well, it's, I think it's also on the title slide. Well. Oh, I see. Yeah, so then on the, um, the one that looks like this code, I think. Let me see. I think it's a car through. Yeah. So these ones. Yeah, this one. Basically, because we've got uh, date time along the bottom oh. and time along here, um, you're increasing time here and time here, so it kind of goes like that. Okay. So like you know, got twenty four here. Whereas this would be like the, yeah. yeah. So then it kind of like goes back around. Yeah. So it's almost like a line. So yeah. 
So is it is it connecting start time and end time on the the x axis? Yeah, effectively, but there's no connection. There's a, lo a load of points basically. So yeah, if you drew a line, it would be like that effectively. Yeah, so you're moving on to the next day, you're moving back to zero. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you're showing the same thing on both axes, really. The only example we're in now is because it looks it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Could we look at slide three? Yeah. I think it would be great to mention something like you have 4.9 million calls. There are two things I, I would add to this. New events. Yeah, it would be much more impressive if you could mention the number of it, like that one call is associated with N events mm -hmm. and then say we have 20 million events or something <coughs> like that. I don't know if that's something Yeah. you can calculate, how easily you can calculate that, but it's just it would be events. much more impressive. It's your, how much does the software look into the events itself? It doesn't really. Can, like the events are IVR, yeah. Q, mm -hmm. agent, <laughs> and hold. I think there's a table right? in the database. Yeah, it's that just says. as long as that, isn't it, basically? Is it so? We can you like we can we can assume that there's an IVR always. We can assume that there's a Q always. Not and then can you? Just I think it does record okay. a Q event even if it's a uh, creation. Okay. <laughs> uh, though that's true of the old table. I don't know about the new one. Yeah, right. There's a there's a list of all the steps basically. So it's just a number of lines in that one in the data set, really. So it would be easy. cool to have the number of events. It would be more impressive. Okay. And it would make the presentation clearer too. Yeah. Because the complexity of a single call, I never got that when I was sitting here. Okay. So we, you have seventy attributes for each call. I would also add something like some important ones are I see. like the IVR, the yeah. queuing, a typical phone call is like IVR, queue, agent, hang up, something okay. like that. So yeah. To just mention like just give the each individual phone call some description, a little bit yeah. of a description okay. to add to the complexity because yeah. that, that, that didn't come out. Okay. For this one, uh, you say it's one month of data. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume that you can change the month of data. We only have the month of data. But if they, they if they gave you another yeah. month, you could so change I'd, it. Yeah, I'd probably mention that that it can hold up to one month of data. It can potentially do more. Really, it's just that this is what we had. The data that we have to yeah. do but it just could, to me it, uh, it looks like you're saying uh, it will only look at one month of data whereas uh, I feel like you can kind of sell it a bit more by saying okay. we, we review one month of data yeah. instead because I know later on you say it's the, in the um, feedback that they're very impressed by that but at this point uh, it yeah. just seems like okay well we, we can work with one month data, and it's not a big deal, but... You could sell it more as well. Yeah. By saying, <coughs> at the beginning, this is the first time anybody has ever seen a month's worth of call center data. Okay. That, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I have a, a much more important design problem. Uh, your title moves. Yeah, I know. It's annoying me as well. It's like magic. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure you can fix it. Yeah. Just, just for me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I might be going just for you. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, can you go to the last slide, the future work? Yes. Use of shared comments. Okay. Use of bulk and ability to show more call. I would say a, a fun thing to add would be something like visualizing a year's worth of data. That, that would be a fun thing to add. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. 
Also, do you mean the bullet point those? Yeah. Yeah, we can do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I moved it over to Google and I think it lost the bullet points. Mm, I would say the, the bullets mm. are not like absolutely critical. Mm. Like. Okay. Well, Every time you mention the Vulcan API, it makes me laugh. <laughs> Why? Why? Because it's insane. It's like video game development sort of thing. Well, so it's OpenGL. Yeah, but at least OpenGL makes, is a bit more specialised. There's about there's gonna be hundreds of lines of setup just to get for the Vulcan. There's it's hundreds of lines of setup with OpenGL. Yeah. You don't just if you don't just really, yeah. if you don't just get it working, you know, uh, you know, or just make it work. If you try to make it work properly, yeah, there's a lot more work put into it. Nine's got some good resources. We know, we know, we found out. Yes. Oh, no, Nine is, yeah, he's, he's Are you using Vulcan? No, actually, but I read about it a lot. It's okay. the new generation of the OpenGL combined yeah. with OpenSeal. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, yeah, to save your time. Okay, that's good. There we go. And the other thing is, uh, this is very you know, retentive. That's the right. title slide. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, this is really you know, retentive, but <laughs> the title slide is supposed to, it usually looks different than the other ones. No, okay. You use the standard slide. Like yeah, center. Yeah, usually it's centered and. Yeah, I don't know. know. It's just. It's as well. I also disagree with you highlighting your name in green. <laughs> <laughs> really? Why? I've know. seen that. It just seems weird. It's funny. I didn't even notice that actually. Okay. Y yeah, y you might want to put your name in black. <laughs> it's, it can be still on its own line and stuff like that. Is Tony the Groove associated with this paper? Yes. Is he? Yes. Did he contribute? Yeah, because I mean, he's been in meetings. We've had oh, that's true. Yeah, he's a few. I know he's not. He would, yeah, this goes back to the stamp and everything. Awesome. Any other comments, questions? Except for the towel. I want to discuss the towel again. I know. You moved to name. Oh, so your it. your name's not on the on the bottom of this side either. There. I know, but like it's inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> well, the title side. side is supposed is is like traditionally special. Yeah, it's, it's not the same picture, format as. Double, uh, double. <laughs> <laughs> it's better you remove the logo of the university before it will be empty totally. On the on the first one. Yeah. Just yes. the first one. Yeah, just first one. Yeah. Okay. It, it's not the traditional title slide format, I would say. But it's okay. not a big deal. But. Okay, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to do anything. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm everything, I mentioned, <laughs> everything I mentioned is not going to be changed. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to not you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions? By the way, you, you, had, uh, you had 11 minutes, so if you want to add a yeah. little more time, same with Liam. I assume you thought yeah, the same thing as me. 12. Yeah, so that's why I specifically minutes. asked it on Tuesday. Ten plus questions. What about the time of it? I thought you thought of the time if you just did um, in the in the proceedings. Mm -hmm. the, it, program. It, the program is going to be uh, online anytime as soon as I send it to Rich, basically. So he does with these precise time slots and everything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I just need to basically do some very last. I swap format. things around and put me first. Or we'll try and get first and last. <laughs> no. you, we just have to be careful that Liam is not trying to speak during the conference and at the tutorial at the exact yeah, same time. Yeah. So I've jo I switched the tutorial times around okay. a little bit. Cool. Yeah. I'm sure you can couple one of them. If I do the tutorial, <laughs> you can do the next one. <laughs> well, you can pay for it. Yeah, we're, we're going to yeah, try to pay you. <laughs> well, it's probably better.